Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to show you today uh, how to use Philfox to do some cable measurements. And the cable that I'm using right now is uh, two, um, two BNC cable um, with a connector in between two with a purpose, um, which I'm going to show you um, because I want to, to introduce a fault in, within the cable so that you can see it in uh, DTF distance to fault features in, that's available in Fieldfox. So let's get into it. So as you can see right now, um, that's a, this is how my setup will look like. Uh, a Fieldfox on port 1 um, with port 1 connected to the cable. So the black cable is about 125cm and uh, this adapter. Then we have um, another grey cable which is um, another 40 cm. So in total the whole cable length is about 165 centimeter. So the first thing that we want to do to run a quick test is um, let's check the return loss of the cable. Um, or then uh, from there um, I'm going to show you uh, what type of calibrations that you can do with um, with a fuel box uh, with and without the um, and then the, the, the effects uh, with and without the calibrations. So let's get into it. So as you can see right now, this is the interface of um, the fuel box, how it looks like in a cable antenna test mode. So how do we get that? Is go to escape mode and cable antenna test. Right? And if you have options of TDR, you show up over here. Then we go to measure, let's go with uh, return loss. That's the first thing that we want to try. Um, so normally, um, I wouldn't recommend to calibrate straight away uh, without knowing what your test uh, would look like. So I would recommend to do a rough setup. Um, means that things like number of points, the power to use, the frequency range, the IF bandwidth, if um, that's able, available here. If it's not, then yeah, these are the few setup that uh, we do recommend to do it before you run the calibration. If not, anything change on these few parameters will need you uh, need user to recal um, the whole system. So it's just a waste of time if you do it straight away calibrations and then you only need to find out that um, your measurements doesn't doesn't meet the spec that you set for the um, calibration. So let's do this frequency range. Um, let's set up to six gig. Thirty k to six. Gig. Oh, let's go to uh, ten my hundred to six gig. Okay. So this is how it look like, and I want to increase the number of points because of this frequency range that we have. Let's say to eight oh one. And if you want more, you can actually go back to escape, sweep, resolutions, more. Okay. And then, after that, um, yeah, it looks a bit um, jagged here. Uh, a lot of uh, fluctuations. Um, it could be the power, but um, because this is just a cable, I don't think it uh, absorbs too much of the power. But if you are testing a passive uh, attenuator, so we do recommend to change the power level because it does um, absorb quite a few uh, watt of um, attenuator depending on the, the type that you're using. So if you need to increase the power level, this is where you're going to do escape measurement setup, power. And currently it's in manual, so you can change the power level as you need to. As you can see, there's not much different um, on that, so we just stay back with um, minus 15 dB. So I'm happy with this one, what we're seeing right now, and um, assuming that that's what you want to see. And that's one one way to reduce the fluctuation here shown on, on the trace. Um, one, of, one of the ways to, um, of course, decrease the, um, oh, sorry, increase the scale, but that, that doesn't do much um, help. So we we can de decrease the scale, and then we put on, uh, we turn on the um, the smoothing effect. So let's go to the escape bandwidth, we turn on the smoothing effect. So normally I set between two or two point five, uh, sorry, two to five percent, depending on what you want. Okay, you can actually set it manually. Um, you can 
Okay, if you're happy with that reading, you can turn on a marker. And let's turn on a second marker. So um, let's do it somewhere here. Then, uh, because this is quite troublesome, if you want to look at marker 1 and then marker 2, you have to come, always come back to marker. Um, the other way that I would recommend is to turn on the marker table here. So you can straight away see what's going on here. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is to um, calibrate the system. As you can see right now in the setup, we have an adapter. N9917B comes with an uh, NTAC connector uh, on the box. But because we are testing a BNC cable, we need to use an adapter. Uh, NTAC to BNC adapter. So with that, um, it might introduce offset uh, in terms of magnitude or phase matching. Um, so if you want to remove that and uh, add the adapter as part of the uh, fuel fork system, um, two ways of doing it. One is to find a BNC type uh, calibration kit or you can straight away use uh, normalizations. So as you can see right now, I do not connect the cable to the fuel fox with that um, let's go back to the interface and we're going to do this um, calibrations sorry escape calibrations and response count so response count there are a few ways of doing it if you just want to do part one then you can choose either open or short response and part two is the same but if you want to do two parts, we do recommend to use normalizations. So this is a very crude way to get a good um, calibrated reading um, if your setup is not complicated. So you can use the normalizations just to get rid of the effects of the adapter. Okay, but for this video, we're going to cover on the open response. Um, so let's click on that open response. Uh, make sure there's nothing connected, not the cable under test. Um, just the adapter, so leave it open, and then click measure. Yep, once you're done, just go back to finish. So this is where you connect back the cable. So it looks like almost the same as before calibration. So one way of checking it is to do a math to memory uh, comparison so how do we do it is uh, let's go to escape so right now it's a calibrated value this is a calibrated result um, then we go to trace go to math and memory we have to dump the current data to memory first then we turn on both data and memory it means that whatever change right now it will show both data and memory right now it's on top of each other you can see a second trace which is alright. So we'll go to data and math, data over memory. So this the formula for normalization. So let's uh, do it this way so that you can see the line here. Okay. Of course, it's going to be a flat line because um, both are on calibration trace. Nothing changed. I haven't touched anything that yet. So sometimes by even by moving the cable, you will see a fluctuation. Okay. And uh, the next thing I want to do is to turn off the calibrations just to see the effect, what's the difference. So before that, let's uh, decrease the scale so that we can see a um, better view. So, so the fluctuation is very minor. And let's turn off the calibrations by doing escape, cal, user cal off, and then escape again so you can see that. It's not much different even if you scale it down further. Um, I think I can take it, I can accept that at most it's um, about 0.45 dB difference. Okay, so for just a simple uh, setup such as that, um, you can do a response count, um, normalizations, um, because it does remove some of the effects of the uh, adapter. So with and without, not much of a difference. Okay. So let's go back to uh, that. Um, yeah, I'll just leave the cal ready as it is. I won't uh, turn on back the calibration. 
Alright, let's go back here. Scale, let's set it to 2 dB per, per division. Um, yeah, that's alright. And then we turn off this trace, math and trace. We turn just the data, math off. So this is the result that you are seeing on the return loss for this cable. And uh, at 3.05 gig is 7.1, up to 2.29 is 9 dB. Okay. So the next parameter that we want to test is um, distance of for VSWR. Okay, so as you can see that time is way below it. And, um, so what we want to do is do this. Scale, just leave it at this it is. Uh, reference level, yeah. So if you want to look uh, to see a bigger hump, a uh, bigger peak, then you just uh, change the scale to higher. Okay, so you can't see anything makes sense because the stop frequent, uh, stop distance is 100 meter so as I mentioned earlier this cable length total length is 165 centimeter so we want to change that um, to stop the stop distance to be closer to um, the exact length of the cable under the tanks. so how do you, how do you change that just go to escape frequency stop distance if it's 165 centimeter probably just put it at 2 meters stop 2 meters so you can see that uh, it's roughly that. So we should see two humps, um, two peak uh, because we have uh, I have uh, introduced uh, in between. So it looks like the second one is way after two meters, and let's set it to two point five meters. Yeah, something like that, or maybe set it to three meters. We can we can tune that back later. That's not a problem. So let's say. Um, so same as this, marker 1, let's set it to 1.25 meters and uh, the second one is 1.65 meters. That's the one that we want to see, but um, why is it not there? Um, so one, another thing that we have to change is what we call a velocity factor. If the signal moves at the speed of light, um, then it will be one. So, we, but of course, you know, cable case is not. So this cable is about 0.66, so which is a 66 percent of the speed of light. How do we change that? So we just go to escape, measurement setup, distance. Uh, sorry, um, distance of our cable specification. So we can just pull it there. 0.66. There we go. And marker one is uh, it's a bit. Hard. So marker one is 1.2, is 1.2 or is it 1 meter? Yeah, it's about 1 meter because the adapter does introduce a 2cm. Yeah, I think it's 102.5, so it's a 125 centimeter. So there you go, um, we have two humps here, and if you want to zoom in better, we change the stop distance to now 2 meters. Okay, So you can do a physical um, length measurements using a Measurement, me measuring tape and then you can confirm that uh, this is what you're looking at so at um, so this is how it look like in uh, DTF VSWR and um, let's save this result so that we can use it to um, do some post-processing um, to convert it to um, DTF um, in DB okay in return loss DB so what we can do is uh, file type, uh, sorry, we go back to escape, save and recall, file type, make sure it's CSV, then we save it as uh, this, and then we can say um, cable under test, oh, sorry, it doesn't sound like cable um, 0, 01, um, then we put DTF uh, VSWR. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can convert it using um, the CSV. And then uh, just put in a formula and you should be able to plot it out DTF in return loss DB format. So the next thing I want to do, the last thing I want to do is uh, to show you how you do uh, insertion loss using one cable, I uh, sorry, one part. Um, so as easy as uh, escape, I show more. Cable loss. So cable loss is insertion loss. 
So this is how it will look like. And then we can turn on the last marker to six, six skip. So um, again, if you remember, um, without the smoothing, just look too, too, too many fluctuations there. So I do recommend to turn on the smoothing, but again, depends on your spec, uh, whether while reporting the, the results, are you allowed to use smoothing? If yes, what is the aperture setting that you should be using? So, right. So to wrap up, in this video, I'm showing you uh, how to do a quick cow, uh, sorry, a normalization cow when you have a, a simple setup. And then what are the parameters that we normally test, uh, such as um, uh, return loss, uh, VSWR, DTF, VSWR, how you, uh, then also um, cable loss, one port cable loss. So there are difference between uh, port cable loss for one port and two ports. Um, yeah, before we close it, um, let's do a quick one. So for two ports, again, um, you just need to connect port one to port two. That's it. Scale let's set it to one, and then because right now I'm not connecting, just give me two seconds. So, of course, this data looks much better than um, just pot, one pot uh, insertion loss. And um, if you want to know more detail, what's the difference? We do recommend to um, find the app notes in from keysight.com. Thanks for watching.